Alexander from Coralus, and today I want to tell you about my top five corals for building a successful aquarium. Now this isn't just for beginners, this is for everyone. I'm just going to give you a little knowledge about some corals and how to choose properly when setting up your aquarium. So I'm assuming anyone watching this video already has a fish tank at home and you have water and sand and rocks and lights and all that going. So you're ready to purchase your first corals. Um, so let me give you a little advice. Number one, when people get in this hobby, unless you're buying somebody's system that's already set up and they already have the sump, the lights, and it's a complete system. You got the wave makers, you got it all going, and you're not looking for to complete the system. But when you get in the hobby and you start out fresh, you may just be only, only able to afford just the aquarium at this moment. And then next month you're gonna afford an extra pump. So while you're building your aquarium and you're taking your time and cycling it, you don't need to rush and just buy corals. A lot of people wanna do that, but the joy of it is looking for the perfect coral for your aquarium, at least for me it is. Um, even though I went through that stage where I put in 100 corals in the first month of owning my fish tank, and then I bought a bigger fish tank and it was just a, a crazy addiction. But now, after being in the hobby for 20 years, I'm about the quality and I'm more about the selection. So, in the, the harmony, it's, it's a big process when selecting corals and putting them next to each other and space is limited. So, this is for a beginner who is making a decision and you know, later on down the road you may change and go to all SPS, but I wouldn't re recommend it for beginners. So, my number one choice for a coral for anyone starting off they don't need much flow, they don't need strong lighting, and actually they do better with lower flow and lower lighting, are mushrooms. And there's such a huge variety of mushrooms out there, and they're fairly cheap. Hairy mushrooms, blue mushrooms, you can get gold mushrooms, red. You don't just have to get boring, like, you'll see like a dull color at some of your local fish stores, maybe like a maroon, red. There's just so much variety. And also buying big colonies. It's nicer to get smaller pieces because you know what you're getting and you know what you're putting in your tank. And I'll talk about dipping in another video um, and what corals you have to dip and what you have to watch out for. So there's so much information there that I'll have to save for another video. But this is just my top five pick of corals. So not only are mushrooms easy, colorful, um, grow fast, and easy to obtain, but they also go well with leathers, which is my next pick. You can put them next to each other and the sting, you don't really notice any, any problem with them sitting on top of each other. So you can get a nice leather, nice Kenya tree. I've seen tons of colors out there. We have some nice ones on Coralus.com. Um, and I'm also gonna put a beginner pack together for people, which I'll put a link in the description for you. But, um, so leathers come in a huge variety. You can get toadstool leathers, you can get crown royal leathers. Uh, you know, so there's a huge variety and they're super easy. And there's no places like with zoanthids for the detritus to fall into and kind of annoy some of the corals. Which I see people, they love getting zoanthids and get these cheap colonies for beginners. Um, they'll get big green pallies and all that. And then they love to feed their corals, but then they don't have enough current. So the food is getting trapped in between the large polyps and it, it can be a mess. So especially when you're starting off, you, you don't have a full tank of invertebrates. You don't have tons of tags eating everything. It's like you're slowly building your ecosystem. So doing that is a process and you want to kind of have some guidance when you do it. Otherwise you may crash and burn or you'll see your corals are covered in red slime algae or you know there's just so many things that can piss you off in the beginning and you don't want to be deterred from such a wonderful hobby. Like I said 20 years in this hobby and I'm still learning every day and I'm still figuring out how to have a more efficient aquarium without stressing myself out. So, number three, you know, I, I just said zoanthids get, or it can be a problem, but star polyps and podiums. They're small enough that they don't really trap in that detritus and they will cover pretty much any surface you put them on. You can put them high, low, on a rock, on your sand, on the overflow, gloom, pretty much anywhere you want and they're just gonna cover that and grow nicely. So, and there is some ultra polyps out there. The Sympodium, which do great with lower lighting. They're blue and green. I'll give you guys some examples um, of the different star polyps. So you're not just stuck with one thing. And you can, if you have Tonga Rock or something really cool, 
they will grow around it looking amazing. My next pick on this list is Favias. Favias are pretty easy to keep. I mean, you can put them on anything and they pretty much will grow around it. The sand or a rock, depending on the size of the piece you get, you can just lay it there. They're photosynthetic, very hardy. As long as you're doing your water changes, you shouldn't need to dose calcium or mag or anything else. So especially when starting out in the beginning, you shouldn't have any coralline algae in your tank and you shouldn't really have any huge desire other than just doing your water changes. So Fabias are great and also egg cans. They're an LPS, they have some tissue. Um, I wouldn't recommend people getting into like the torches right away, but an egg can's a good start and if your egg cans are doing well, then I would move into the LPS like a Euphilia, Frog Spawn, Torch, Hammer, something else like that. But I tend to like to see how the egg cans do first and then move into them. So I have egg cans and Fabias in the same category, but then my next one I have are Duncans. So Duncans are pretty cool. I love LPS stuff. I also like the hard skeletons, how they grow. They're branching with these huge fluffy polyps. So Duncans are great and they're an awesome way to judge your growth in your tank because anyone who started off with a Duncan, they may seem like very slow um, growers or whatever. And a lot of that I contribute to are people buying cheap salt, which I will talk about in another video. Always buy reef salt, <laughs> unless you're just a fish person and you don't care. But in this hobby, the first thing you can do, the number one thing is your water. So that's another episode, but RODI, number one, then your water, salt, you mix with that, you know, before your equipment, before your lighting, before your wave makers, you gotta have a good salt. Um, so these corals, like I said, in the beginning, people who are starting off, um, these are easy corals for beginners. They look great and they come in a wide variety of colors and they're not gonna stress your system. They don't need any special treatment or anything. Um, the pops and the dipping, which I wanted to get into in another episode, I, I try to stay away from them because they bring a lot of dirt. Anyone who has came home from a local LFS and blown off their pops, they tend to have just, just like I said, tons of detritus on them and different things. So watch when you're feeding your corals. It's a good thing to blow them off afterwards. Um, because like I said, people starting out with a new tank may not have the MP40s or enough current or whatever people are using nowadays for their, their waves, Tunzis or even the JBOs. But I recommend good flow before you invest in some corals. So get your equipment lined up and then the corals are the last thing. So sorry if I uh, <laughs> am blabbering a little bit and going off in different tangents, but there's just so much to learn, it's not just one thing. It's like people always ask me one simple question. I go, ah, there's not just one answer. There's years of experience behind that answer. I've had over 20 different tanks. And I will tell you this, that every single tank is a different experience. Even my display tank, the left side and the right side, corals, different colors, different polyp extension. And people, they always, they ask so many, like I said, they're like, why, why are my polyps shorter? Why are your polyps longer? I go, well, if they're in longer flow for a longer period of time, they may find it more beneficial to grow longer lashes to pick up more food or to put up with the stronger abuse of the current to protect their mouth when feeding. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why corals react the way they do. So I'm on my way to becoming the coral whisperer because I can tell you the health of a coral just by looking at the tissue. Um, Zoanthilla is huge. And that's why you can have the same coral as somebody else and it looks like crap in your tank and looks awesome in their tank. It's, and it's not just your expensive lighting or your expensive filtration because a guy I met at the swap the other day, he had the Chinese lighting in a small tank and his corals looked better than the people with the Ecotech Radions and the Starfire glass and the ruby red sumps and all the fun equipment, but the corals aren't doing well. So uh, stay tuned for the next episode. As always, thanks for watching and happy reefing. Feel free to leave your question in comments below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and yeah, I do appreciate the comments and people watching and subscribers and non-subscribers. So thanks everyone. We appreciate you helping us build this community together. 
and <laughs> looking forward to seeing you in the future. One more thing, if you're looking at the sun coral or a non-photosynthetic filter feeder at your local fish store, do not get it. Um, they're almost impossible to keep for beginners. I only recommend them for people who have had their tanks established for like two years and up, just because the food isn't there yet. And if you try to supplement that food, you're just going to dirty your tank and end up um, suffocating that coral. So the tissue and the cellular respiration is very important. And another thing I tell people, just because my corals may be healthy and beautiful and come from pristine, pristine water conditions, by the time they're shipped and they get delivered to you, that coral has expelled all kinds of waste. So just think about it this way, it's breathing, eating and crapping in that water for 24 hours until it gets delivered to you. So you want that water dumped out. Do not put that water in your container, even if you think it came from the best system in the world. That water is now contaminated. Corals give off. Um, several different things, so depending on what the coral is. So, the more you know.